Hello, everybody. My name is Aline Yon. Thank you for being here tonight. And uh, tonight, I will introduce you to um, the Odon in traditional Chinese medicine. Um, first of all, please, uh, would you please uh, all of you mute yourself so it'll be easier for everybody to hear the webinar. Thank you very much. First, uh, let's start with gratitude. I would like to start with a land acknowledgement. I would like to acknowledge that the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Shipewa, the Adesonzoni, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples. I'd also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. I would also like to thank the Ontario College of Traditional Chinese Medicine in Toronto for organizing this webinar. And I would like to thank you for making the time to be there tonight. Disclaimer, this webinar is only for educational purposes. It's not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Please always seek the advice of your healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Please never disregard, disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you have learned on this webinar. Who am I? First, my name is Aline Yan. Um, I'm a traditional Chinese medicine acupuncturist. I'm registered with the College of Traditional Chinese Medicine Practitioners and Acupuncturists of Ontario. Um, I hold a bachelor's degree in life science from the University of Paris in France. And after my bachelor's degree, I went on to earn a master's, a master's degree in biotechnology management from an engineering school called SCA in Paris in France. After uh, I moved to Canada, I went to study um, acupuncture at the Ontario College of Traditional Chinese Medicine. What is traditional Chinese medicine? I'm sure some of you have already seen, seen these images, but I think it's important that we know what traditional Chinese medicine is because people usually compare it with uh, Western biomedicine. So when you look at those pictures on the left-hand side, some of you would see a rabbit with here you have the head of the rabbit, the eye of the rabbit, and here you have the ears of the rabbit. Other people, they would see a duck with here still the head of the duck, here you have the eye of the duck, and here the beak of the duck. Does that mean that the people who saw the rabbit are wrong? No, they're not. Does that mean that the people um, who saw uh, the rabbit or the duck, any, anyway, if you saw the duck or the rabbit, you're both right. It just means that depending on the perspective you look at the picture, you would see either a rabbit or a duck, or maybe somebody else would see something else. And it's the same when you look at health. Traditional Chinese medicine look at health with a different lens, a different perspective from Western biomedicine. And it's like when you look at the right hand side of the slide here, you would see a cup of water. Some people would see that it's half full and other people would see that it's half empty. Both people would be right. It just depends on the perspective you look at it. Such as in traditional Chinese medicine, ideally you would go and seek treatments before you actually seek. So the purpose of traditional Chinese medicine is not only to treat you when you're already sick, but the main point is treating you to make sure you will never fall sick. That's, I think, the main difference between both medicines. And when we look at the human body, traditional Chinese medicine look at the human body with a different lens than Western biomedicine. For instance, on the left-hand side of the slide, in Western biomedicine, you would see the, a drawing from Leonardo da Vinci that is very famous. So just like that drawing from Leonardo da Vinci, we have here the head and you have the torso, the arms and the hands and the legs. And as you can see here, they are very close to what we see in real life in a human body. And um, 
sorry. Uh, would you please mute yourself, all of you, because I, I can hear like a noise, a background noise that is a bit annoying. Or um, if Wendy, you can mute everybody because I can't uh, do it by here. Thank you. So when you look at that drawing, you can see that it's uh, very lifelike and it really describes the real human body. And that's what biomedicine does. They look at the human body and just describe it exactly how it is. And they would look at it through different models. First from uh, an outside level, and then they would use a microscope to look at uh, even more smaller levels. How would traditional Chinese medicine look at the human body? They would have it on a conceptual way. Believe it or not, this map is actually a map of a human body. And they don't want to, they don't, they don't, they don't bother describing it the same way as biomedicine, because everybody knows what a human body looks like, but they look at it in a more conceptual way. For instance, here, you would see the water and in traditional Chinese medicine, the water would represent the kidney meridians, which is the life meridian because water is at the source of all life. He would see the wood and wood would represent the liver meridian. And here you would see a farmer on this field and that would represent the earth meridian that would take care of digestion. And here, you would see uh, the mountain too. So that's how traditional Chinese medicine would look at a human body. They would make a lot of analogies with nature and that's how they would describe the functions of each organs and meridians. How would both biomedicine and traditional Chinese medicine look at this? Here we look at symptoms, for instance, fatigue, quiet voice, breathing issues, pale complexion, uh, catch cold easily, sweats easily, and dislikes cold weather. So biomedicine would cut and look at the symptoms one by one. For instance, if you're tired, they say, oh, maybe it has something to do with the endocrine system. So they would send you to the endocrinologist. If you have a quiet voice, they wouldn't know what to do with that. Um, if they ha you have breathing issues, they would say, oh, um, Maybe they would uh, send you to uh, somebody who would take care of your respiratory system. If you catch cold easily, um, they would say, oh, maybe it's the immune system. So, uh, and if uh, you sweat easily, they say, oh, it could be an endocrine thing. So they would send you to the endocrinologist. And if you dislike cold weather, they say that's too bad for you, wear more clothes. How, on the other hand, how would traditional Chinese medicine look at those symptoms? They say, oh, you are tired, you have a quiet voice, you have breathing issues, you have shortness of breath. When you go upstairs, you look pale. And each time it's, each time it's a bit cold, you would catch a cold easily and you would sweat easily if you're nervous and so on. And you don't like the cold weather, oh, in traditional Chinese medicine, they say it's the same pattern. We would call it lung qi deficiency. And then some people would say, oh, traditional Chinese medicine doesn't work. Um, it's just the placebo effect. There's no clinical papers published on it. Well, in Asia, there, were, there are a lot of clinical papers and texts written on traditional Chinese medicine. Um, and it's been written for a very long time, uh, thousands of years. And even in the so-called Western world, there are lots of clinical papers published on acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine. And it's been proven that traditional Chinese medicine and acupuncture work in reproductive function, pregnancy, fertility, pain, it would also help as an adjuvant for cancer. It would help for digestive issues like constipation, but it would also help with depression, insomnia, and the list goes on and on. In short, what you need to remember is traditional Chinese medicine is um, a medicine system on its own. So if you have a question, does traditional Chinese medicine works in this and that and this and that, the answer is usually yes. 
so feel free to uh, consult with either me or another traditional me Chinese medicine practitioner. Traditional Chinese medicine is more than 2,200 years old. Why do I say that? Because you have the, late, the Yellow Empress classic of medicine, Anti Neijing, which is a 2,200 year old book. And that book summarizes theories and techniques from traditional Chinese medicine. So if you have a book that theorizes theory and techniques, it means that the medicine is older than that. And some sources says that traditional Chinese medicine is, has been there for more than 3000 years. On the other hand, when was modern biomedicine born? Um, some sources says that um, it has been born, it was born in the 19th century with Claude Bernard and Pasteur. Now, how would autumn be seen in traditional Chinese medicine? First, we look at what happens in nature in the autumn and with people, with the human beings. Autumn usually is the time to harvest. So autumn is, they say, is the, the, the season of the metal. So you use metal to harvest. So you see here, this uh, man has a, a metal sickle that would help him harvest food. So autumn is a time where you use metal to harvest food. And autumn is also the time where you will sort out things. You would prepare for the winter to come. So you would sort out what do you need to keep that would help you through the winter until next spring and what you don't need anymore. Or just like here, after you have harvested, you need to sort out which are the pears that you would keep and which are the pears that you would need, that you can, that you would need to eat now, otherwise they would go bad. But, and for the pears that um, you need to keep, you would also look at the value of them and sell them. And when you sell them, you get money and money, Back then, it was also money with metal coins. So that's why we say that autumn is the season of the metal. You use metal to harvest your fruits and vegetables and with the, the fruit of your harvest, you would sell them and then you would get metal back in the form of money. And what do the texts, what does the text say in traditional Chinese medicine? For instance, in the Yellow Emperor's classic of medicine on chapter two on the art of life through the four seasons, they say that in the three months of autumn, all things in nature reach their full maturity. The grains ripen and harvesting occurs. The heavenly energy cools as does the weather. The wind begins to stir. This is the changing or pivoting point where the young or active phase turns into its opposite, the yin or passive phase. One should retire with the sunset and arise with the dawn. Just as the weather in autumn turns harsh, harsh so does the emotional climate. It is therefore important to remain calm and peaceful, refraining from depressions so that one can make the transition to winter smoothly. This is the time to gather one spirit and energy, be more focused and not allow desires to run wild. One must keep the lung energy full, clean, and quiet. This means practicing exercises to enhance lung chi. Also, one should refrain from both smoking and grief, the emotion of the lung. This will prevent kidney or digestive problems in the winter. If this natural order is violated, damage will occur to the lungs, resulting in diarrhea with undigested food in winter. This compromises the body's ability to store in winter. We'll go we go slowly through that text. So if you read that text, you would understand that, that there's a lot of things to do in, um, in the autumn. First, it's not summer anymore. So maybe some of you, they don't feel like going out and express themselves as much as in the summer. In the autumn, people, just like the animals, they start to prepare themselves. They start to go in and prepare for the winter. So for some of you, now it's the time where you don't feel like going out anymore. You don't feel like going have such an active social life anymore and it's normal, this is the order. Now, 
according to the traditional Chinese solar calendar, when did the autumn start? Well, autumn actually started on the 7th of August. And some of you might remember in August, it was time to harvest all the fruits and vegetables. And actually we had the second stage of the autumn because we have passed the autumn equinox, which was um, a few days ago. And when you look at the text earlier, they said that the autumn is the time where the young energy, so the solar energy of the summer starts to go in. As some of you might notice, um, you, the days are shorter. So if you look at it, for instance, here you have spring and the white part is the young energy. So in spring, the young energy goes goes up. So the days are longer and you have more young. The days are longer and the nights are shorter. And now we are at the point where the yin starts to come out, which means the days are shorter and the nights are, are longer. And when we look at the autumn in through the five elements, lances, autumn is here the metal. Some of you might remember that in the summer, it was the fire season. Everybody wanted to go out. It was very warm. The sun was really out. And then if you attended the previous webinar on Earth, Earth, it was the season where, um, you know, we had lots of yellow and orange fruits, the peaches and so on. And now we go into the metal. So in autumn, according to tra traditional Chinese medicine, the weather is dry. So there's a lot of dryness in the autumn. And maybe some of you would, would notice that it's not as humid as uh, during uh, the past few months, for instance. And some of you could feel that uh, your skin is drier. Autumn is also the season of the white color or metallic colors, autumn is metal. And autumn is also the season for the lung and the large intestine meridians. We, we go through it later. And in autumn, some it's the season where it's the season with the nose, skin, and body hair. So some of you might notice that your nose is drier, that your skin is drier. And some of you who had issues would feel that during the autumn you cough more. And autumn is also the season of a grief and sadness. So some of you might find yourself tearful. And usually what's happening is grief and sadness would be the metal element. And for some people who don't have a strong metal element, then if they have unresolved grief and sadness, then when comes the autumn, you would feel more sad. So it's the time to actually grieve and let go. And the autumn, they also say that autumn um, is where the part of the body, the upper part, the upper back and the shoulders are, um, are the more affected. So we'll talk about it later. And also autumn is um, the season of the poor, is one of um, the spiritual entity of your body. And the Po is the special entity that keeps you alive. It's your earth, um, how can I say? It's the entity that keeps you here and there, your, um, your, your, your flesh, your body on earth. And Otan is also where you need to gather your courage, but we'll talk about it later. So how to be healthy in Otan with traditional Chinese medicine first? we would need to, as usual, to go to bed and get up um, with um, the sun. So go to sleep when the sun sets and get up when the sun rises. So which means we can sleep more because uh, the nights are longer now. We, do, we should also eat the appropriate autumn food. We should do a lot of breathing exercises because autumn is the season of the long meridian should wear a scarf, again, protect um, the upper part of the body, the upper back and the shoulders. Please also take care of your skin because autumn is also the season with dryness and the skin needs to be moisturized. Excuse me. Autumn also is the season where you need to let go of things that don't serve you anymore. 
I will go through that later. And also autumn is the season where you value what you have um, with money, for instance. And autumn is the season to gather the courage to fight for what things, for the things that are worth it. So now, why do I say that we need to rise and retire with the sun? Um, so usually when I say rise and retire with the sun, we should get up with the sun. We should live in tune with the season and we should go to sleep with the sun. And I know that here in modern world, we have electricity and so on. So people tend to go to bed uh, later. And um, we should still retire before 10 and 11 p.m. Why? Because it's the time of the gallbladder and liver meridians. And you need those meridians to be at rest because those meridians are the one that would um, control what we would call hormones in uh, Western medicine. Um, because they said that in Chinese medicine that the liver meridian stores blood and in blood you find the hormones. So when you have your hormones in check, that's when you are in good health. And also the gallbladder meridian is also the meridian that, in charge, that is in charge of decision-making. So if you find yourself having a hard time making decisions, be a good time to go to bed early, earlier, which, which means around 10 or 11 p.m. So you, so you would have um, a better ability to make the right decisions for you. So when we look at the traditional Chinese medicine biological clock, you see that here it's a clock with 24 hours. So for instance, um, for each slot of two hours, you have a meridian that is at, that is um, that it's the time of the meridian. So during that time, there are things that it's advisable that we would do. For instance, um, I said earlier, go to bed before 10, 11, because with the time change, uh, 10 p.m. would become 11 p.m. and so on. Um, because during that time you should sleep because then you would have cellular repair would be blood cells and so on. And because it's a time of the gallbladder between 11 p.m. and 1 a.m. And then afterwards you have time of the liver. It's a deep sleep, that's why, and it's a time where you detox blood. And also this time where you plan uh, for your life. That's why they said, like I know in French, they say, like if you have a hard time making a decision, they say sleep on it because during your sleep, you, you would be advised. And if you want to be advised during your sleep, it's good that you are asleep during those two times. And if you look at that clock right after the liver meridian, you have the lung meridian. So um, the lung meridian during that time between three and 5 a.m. It's the time where you should be in deep sleep and where you would dream, dream. And if people usually they get up, they have insomnia and they get up between three and 5 a.m. Usually um, I would suspect as a clinician that there's something with their lungs or they have an unresolved grief. So if you find yourself getting up between three and 5 a.m., know that there's something with your metal meridian, the lung meridian. And maybe it would be time, for instance, um, to go for an acupuncture treatment to, uh, to help with your insomnia. And then afterwards, between 5 and 7 a.m., usually it's the time of the large intestine, another metal, because the large intestine, the function is to sort out things, to sort out the, the digested food that you would keep that would nourish you, and the digested food that you don't need, you would poop it out. Um, that's why I usually... Um, tell my patients, oh, do you do you go to do you have your stools first thing in the morning when you wake up? And if not, it would tell me that the metal meridian um, would be affected. So during the autumn, we'd also need to eat the appropriate food. So what food should we eat during the autumn? First, as usual, we should always eat whole grains food. And also you should eat seasonal produce. And here you can see seasonal, you have carrots and you also have onion and broccoli. So in the autumn, we saw earlier that the color is white. So in the autumn, it would be a good idea to add more white food, white colored food. And autumn is also the time where people, you gather yourself, where instead of being very outgoing, like in the summer, 
you will start to go inwards and to gather yourself and the 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 flavor that would help you gather yourself that would help you being at strange would be sour and pungent you would need more pungent food in the autumn because um in autumn is also um the season where the nose is very important. So you would need to smell the food and have more pungent food, spices, but also other foods like leeks and onion and garlic and cabbage. And what type of food you would have for sour food? You would have sourdough bread, for instance, you would have sauerkraut or kimchi, pickles, rose hip teas, cranberries, they are sour. And you will notice that you have cranberries, for instance, for Thanksgiving feast, aduki beans, and you would also you could also use lemon or vinegar to add more sour in what you eat. And again, not too much. You don't need a lot of sour food. You just need a little bit, so it would help you gather yourself. And autumn is also the season where it's dry, where the weather is dry. So you would also need moistening food and white and moistening food from, for instance, like soybeans products like milk, soy, soy milk or tofu. Uh, you could have also dairy, which is white and moistening, not too much dairy though, um, because it would add dampness in your system. And other moistening food would be pears or apples. And for instance, if you have a sore throat, for instance, usually um, your Chinese medicine practitioner would, would um, advise you to to, to boil pear, to cut your pear in two, to remove the core and to boil it and eat it with honey. So it would moisten your throat. And some of you who are Asians or know the persimmon fruits, it's also the season of harvest of persimmon and persimmon is, is also a moistening food. You would also have more eggs or eat almonds or pine nuts. And pine nuts are, is, is really, a double food because not only it's moistening, but it also pungent. How would you cook during the autumn? Autumn is the season of the lung meridian that opens into the nose. So you need food that while they cook, they become fragrant. So for instance, um, the preferred choice of cooking during the autumn would be baking because when you bake and then the aroma fills the whole house. And here, for instance, you look at the Thanksgiving feast, for instance, you would have baked ham, you have baked goods and then baked uh, vegetables in the oven. And, and without forgetting, here we have the cranberry uh, sauce because you need a little bit of sourness to keep yourself in, to astringe, to gather yourself during the autumn. And another way of uh, stimulating um, smell and the nose will be saute food. Just like here, you have typically an autumn dish with tofu and mushroom. Mushroom is white and is moistening. And, um, and then you would have the scallions here, it's pungent. So those would be the preferred food for autumn, but you have to balance the seasonal recommendations with your constitution, constitution, your health conditions and your life circumstances. Uh, for instance, if um, um, somebody has a lot of dampness, um, I would tell them maybe not too much moistening food. If somebody just gave birth, I would say, oh, first like nourish yourself. Um, you will see later for the autumn. Another thing that you need to do in the autumn is breathing exercises because autumn is uh, the season of the lung meridian that governs respiration and also the immune system. So you need to breathe to tonify the lung and the immune system. And by immune system in Chinese medicine, they call it the defensive qi. So make sure that you breathe fully this autumn. I know this is pandemic and a lot of us work with a mask all day long. So I would really advise you to go out in nature as much as you can and take deep breathing. And you could also do a lot of breathing through meditation, qigong, tai chi and yoga. But really make sure to take deep breathing and to exercise breathing. This is the season to tonify the lungs.
Also, autumn is the season where you would need to wear a scarf because as you saw earlier, autumn is the season where the shoulders and the upper back uh, could be vulnerable. And at those points, at the shoulders um, and at the back of the neck, you also have what we call in traditional Chinese medicine, wind points. Because in the autumn, you have more winds and winds, as they say in traditional Chinese medicine, they bring pathogens. So if you don't want to catch a cold, make sure you wear a scarf that covers your shoulders and also your neck. Autumn is also the season where you should really, really take care of your skin if you haven't done it earlier, um, because autumn is the season of dryness and you need your skin to be moisturized. And again, the skin is also the first barrier, the first protection of your body against germs. Um, so make sure you moisturize your skin, and especially now with the pandemic where uh, people use a lot of uh, hydroalcoholic gel to sanitize their hands, make sure that you moisturize your skin because your skin will be even more drier now uh, with the autumn. Autumn is also the season for letting go and take time to, to grieve. Why do I say that? Um, because the autumn is the season of the metal. The metal that you used to harvest your fruits and vegetables, but also the metal, the knife, the scissors that would cut things that you don't need. So it would be things, for instance, I would really encourage you if you had issues with grieving or if you feel unusually sad, tidy your house, sort out things, decide which possessions, which things you want to keep and which things you don't need anymore and let go. It's also um, the season to let go of habits that don't serve you anymore. It's also a good time, for instance, to stop smoking um, because uh, smoking would dry your lung, your lung meridian even more and would weaken you, your, um, your defensive energy even more. Also, autumn would be the season of letting go of people that don't serve you anymore and people who don't help you in your life. It's really the time where you would find the courage because the metal energy is stronger in the autumn that, that you would find that people would cut people out from their life because they don't serve them. They're not uh, beneficial to them anymore. And for... Um, People who tend to grieve, to tend to be more sad during the autumn, it could be because their lung, their metal energy is not very strong, so they have a hard time grieving. And during the other seasons, it would be okay, not grieving, but then when comes the autumn, then any unresolved grief would come out because the metal energy would be really, really strong and they find themselves very, very sad and tearful. And in that case, I would really tell them, do cry, do take time to grieve. If um, you lost an animal a few months ago that you didn't grieve and so on, and all of a sudden you find yourself missing that animal very dearly, maybe it's time to do a grieving, a grieving ceremony to to have a grieving process to let go of that dear animal and it works with animal with things with events with people so if you find yourself very sad at the moment and very tearful don't be ashamed of being sad and tearful it's the time to let go take time to grieve take time to take care of yourself and if and you could also take time, you know, to just tidy your house to help yourself sort out um, your grief. And if that is doesn't help enough, um, coming to acupuncture could be a good idea. So the acupuncturist um, would help you strengthen your lung meridian, your metal energy, so that you can let go more easily. Letting go doesn't mean forgetting. Letting go just means making space for your life, for things that are actually beneficial for you right now. And things that don't serve you anymore, that you cut them out from your life. Autumn is also 
the season to value what you have. As we, as we saw earlier, we saw that autumn is the season of the metal and what is also in metal, the coins. So autumn is the season where you, where you would appreciate the value of what you have. It's also the season of harvesting. If you had any investments before, then some of them would come to fruition now. It's the season to be grateful for what you have and value them, monetary wise, but also the value we would give them. And that's why in traditions, for instance, like in China, they have the mid autumn festival where they, are, they celebrate the end of the harvest and they are grateful because of the harvest and the value that family and friends, that's why they have their dinner. And that's why they, they have it uh, during the full moon because you have the round moon that symbolizes togetherness, togetherness. And even in Canada and the United States, it's also the time where people give Thanksgiving or celebrate Thanksgiving, they're grateful for what they have. So it's the time to appreciate what you have. So first in the autumn, you would tidy, you would sort out things that you keep to the things that you let go. And then the things that you keep, you value them and you're thankful to them. Autumn is also the time to take the courage to fight for things um, that are worth it. Why do I say that? Because autumn is the time of the metal. And with metal, we usually associate, because metal at back then you have swords. So you would have people with swords, swords, weapons, who would fight the bad people because it's a time where you sort out the good people from the bad people. So autumn, the metal, would also symbolizes justice and order. And when you have justice and order, autumn is also the time where you would find the courage to raise your voice. Again, voice is also um, uh, controlled by the Lang Meridian to raise your voice and fight for things that are worth it. Now, what are the three things you would like to do this autumn? I will leave a few minutes for you to write down what are the three things you would do this autumn. Either you could write it down uh, on a piece of paper or take notes on your phone or computer or just um, have a mantle note on it. And if you want, feel free to share. On Sorry, the I missed that. Sorry. And if you want, also feel free to share uh, on the chat what are the three things you will do this autumn. And if you have any questions, also feel free to uh, type them uh, on the chat. Now, autumn, we said that autumn is the season of metal. And some of us might have metal imbalance. So when would you notice that you have the metal imbalance? What is metal imbalance? And when should you consult for acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine? First, if somebody has a healthy metal, and again, as I said earlier, metal is justice and order. So somebody who has a healthy metal, those people would hold to principles. They would keep their commitments. They would be very organized. Uh, think um, of you know, those accountants that are very organized. Uh, and also they deal with metal, they deal with money. So they're very organized, they're very particular and so on. They have a sense of law and orders. 
and um, they have a high sense of justice. That's why autumn is also, you know, the time where, you know, if you have a high sense of justice and you think that there's something worth fighting for with metal, then you raise your voice. Uh, somebody who has a healthy metal, they, if they have something to let go, a job, um, an old sweater or old trousers or after a breakup or things like that, they can go let go very easily of the positions, the situations of the people and move on with their life in a very healthy way. Somebody with a healthy metal would also have a very good immune system. They wouldn't have any allergy, they wouldn't catch a cold, they would be strong through the autumn and the winter and so on. They would also have a healthy skin. Usually they say metal people, they have a very, very nice skin and they would also have a strong voice. On the contrary, somebody who has an unbalanced metal, what would they look like? It would be people who would be like tired all the time. They would look pale, they would look white, just like the, the color of the metal. They would have breathing issues. If they go up the stairs, they, have a, they would have shortness of breath very easily. They would cough very easily. They would have a weak voice. Like if you have people around you who speak with a very, very, very quiet voice, usually it's because they have something with their metal element. They would catch cold easily too, or they would sweat easily. Like some people in your life, for instance, if um, you know they get nervous and they sweat easily, or if um, um, if they are, yeah, if um, yeah, they would sweat very easily, then you would know the metal is unbalanced. If somebody has tool issues, either constipated or diarrhea, usually it's large intestine, it's large intestine meridian, it's also a metal meridian. Somebody who has skin issues, it would be unbalanced metal, either dry skin or acne and so on, it's metal meridian. And people who lose things very easily, like they go somewhere and then they forget the spoons, the fork, the phone, they don't know where they put the keys. Um, that would be somebody who has an unbalanced metal. And also on the contrary, people who hold on unreasonably on things. For instance, um, they keep their sweatshirt who is like full of holes and so on, or they keep their broken toys and so on for a very, very long time. Usually you have an unbalanced metal. And also people who have difficulty grieving, difficulty letting go. People who are um, very sad for a long time after a breakup or very sad for a long time after um, losing a loved ones or they regret their old jobs or their old friends for a very, very, very long time, that's unbalanced metal. So for all these issues you have here, if you find you recognize some of the issues here and you recognize more than three of those, maybe you have an unbalanced metal and maybe it's time to come for acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine. So what does a traditional Chinese medicine acupuncture appointment look like? First, acupuncture should be pain-free um, because first we use very, very thin single-use steroid needles. And as you could see in that picture here on the right-hand side, on that big needles, hypodermic needle that people would use for vaccines, for instance, you can fit in it more than 10 acupuncture needles. That's how thin the needles are. So when the acupuncture needles enter your, your body, you might feel a prick, just like a mosquito bite, but it shouldn't be painful. And what does a traditional Chinese medicine treatment look like? First, when you go to your practitioner, for instance, I would take your health history. I would uh, check how you are in your physical body, but also emotionally. I would check your lifestyle, what time you go to bed, how often do you eat, at what time and what do you eat? And then I would also check your tongue. For instance, I would ask you to stick out your tongue just, that, just like this lady here. It's the only time where sticking out your tongue is actually polite. It's during a traditional Chinese medicine um, appointment. And also I would check your pulse on both wrist, just like this lady is doing here. And then would come time of treatments after I made up your diagnosis. 
I would do acupuncture, but also moxa or gua sha or cupping. I would give you lifestyle and diet advice. I could also do twina, which is Chinese massage. And some people, not me, because I'm not licensed yet, so would also prescribe uh, traditional Chinese medicine herbal teas. And then when you have acupuncture, once the needle are in, it's your time to relax and rest. So usually the needles would be in and you would be resting on the treatment table for about 20 to 30 minutes on average. And some people are so relaxed during the acupuncture treatment that they fall asleep. So that's why I say normally acupuncture shouldn't hurt because you should be able to fall asleep on the treatment table. Now, when do you need to consult? You, need, you would consult as needed each time you have a discomfort, each time you have an emotion that stays for a long time. Could it be grief, but could it also be anger or, or frustration or foreign worry? Like for instance, if you can't sleep because uh, your mind is over, over, um, overacting and you are stuck to, and you have the impression that you have a hamster wheel in your head, it might be time to come for acupuncture. And also it would be a good time to have uh, acu an acupuncture treatment at the change of seasons, which is now, by the way, if you find yourself catching a cold easily or too tired or insomnia or you are sad all of a sudden right now and you don't know why. How often would you go for acupuncture treatment? It would depend if your condition is acute or chronic. And usually when it's acute, you would have um, appointments closer to each other, like every two days, for instance. And, and so, and, um, and then you would have a short treatment. So for instance, you would come every two days for one week or two, and then it's done. And if it's chronic, it would, you would have uh, your treatment uh, for longer. You could have maybe have once a week, but for several weeks. And how long would you have your treatment? Usually until the issue is resolved. For instance, if it's an acute mm -hmm. condition after one week or two, or maybe after one, uh, one or two sessions, it would be resolved and you, you don't have to come back. But if it's more chronic, um, depending on how long it's been there, and then usually I would say we would have a weekly treatment for four to six weeks and then we reassess. And depending on how you react to acupuncture and so on, we'll see if you have to come more often or less often. Now, um, I know this is autumn and this is pandemic and despite the vaccine and so on, if you've been vaccinated and even if you're not vaccinated, um, there are tips that could help you stay healthy this autumn. Apart from eating the right food, going to bed, breathing, and so on, you could also do acupressure on you with this point uh, just under your leg. Uh, it's called Susanli or stomach 36. So as you can see in that picture here at the center, so that person puts the hand just under uh, the knee so under your kneecap, the bony part, you would have kind of a hole. And from the hole, you put your hand, four finger breath here. And then just under those four fingers, not on the bone, but at one finger width from the bone, there's a point that is a little bit sensitive. So you would massage that point two or three minutes every day. Massaging those points would help with your digestive system and also with uh, your defensive chi, which is, in other words, your immune system. It would help you to keep healthy. And in East Asia, for instance, they would say, if you want to uh, live long and in good health, they would tell you to massage that point for two or three minutes every day, both, uh, both, uh, both legs. And the only contraindications for that point is if you have a stomach ulcer, um, I would be cautious and I would really um, get an appointment with a traditional Chinese medicine acupuncturist or practitioner uh, to check if it's still good for you to massage that point. If you can't find that point using that hand just under your knee, you can use that second technique here on the right hand side. You just put your hand on your kneecap 
And then your ring finger would usually fall naturally on that point, uh, just one finger width uh, on the side of your shin bone. And to know if you're on the right point, usually when you press that point is a little bit sensitive. So thank you for being here tonight. Um, my name is Ali Nyon. I'm a registered acupuncturist. You can contact me at this email address, alin at dameacupuncture.com. This is my website, www.dameacupuncture.com. And you could also follow me on social media uh, at Dame Acupuncture on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. And I, if you were interested in having an appointment with me, I, I work at Yoga Mamas at Leslieville on um, Queen Street East, and you can make an appointment by calling this number or online. Um, today is also my last day of webinar with the Ontario College of Traditional Chinese Medicine. So I'm very grateful for the Ontario College of Traditional Chinese Medicine for hosting all those seasonal webinars that I've been doing for the past year. Um, that also means that if you want tips for the change of seasons, because we would be entering winter early November, around the 7th of November, uh, I would invite you to watch the replays of my past webinars. So around early November, end of October, early November, you would have to watch the earth um, the earth season in traditional Chinese medicine. It's not up yet, but it will be up, uploaded on my YouTube channel uh, by the end of October. And then from mid-November onwards, we would be winter. So I would like to invite you to watch the webinar I did on health in winter with traditional Chinese medicine that I did last year, and it's on my YouTube channel. So to find my YouTube channel, you just have to Google Aline Yon or Dame Acupuncture, and you should be able to find it. Now, if uh, you are interested in studying traditional Chinese medicine, uh, know that um, you can contact uh, my colleague, Jessica Wader, who is the admissions coordinator at the Ontario College of Traditional Chinese Medicine, and you can contact her at this email address, admissions with an S at OCTCM.com, phone number 416-527-4942. And the deadline to apply for uh, the winter term is um, the 15th of December. And now I'm going to stop uh, sharing my slides so Jessica can introduce herself. Hey. I'll try to... I'm not sure how to do that. Actually, I tried to pin you or whatever. So just talk. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Thank you so much for letting me hop on at the end here. I did drop my information as well into the chat. Um, but as Aileen said, if you enjoyed her webinars, it's been a great series for the past year and you want to learn a little bit more about that and maybe start treating people yourself. Um, acupuncture may be a career for you. So yeah, um, our deadline to apply is December 15th and it will be starting in January. So our base level program, the Diploma of Acupuncture is a two year long program. There's six terms um, total, so three a year. It's a quite intensive program, but um, it's quite enjoyable as well to have a career where you're able to have something hands-on and help people and especially with COVID I think it's brought health to the the forefront of people's minds so yeah I dropped my information here and if you're interested you can give me a call or text or an email as well to admissions at octcm.com so I hope to hear from you soon and again thank you so much Aileen <laughs> you're welcome Jessica um can I share the screen again Anyway, this is the end of the presentation today. If you have any questions, please feel free to um, type your questions in the chat. And it's currently 7.25, so I will stay here for a few minutes should you have any questions. You're welcome, Sharon.
Katrina, you're welcome. I think I recognize your surname. <laughs> Welcome, Wendy. Yeah, we'll keep in touch, Jessica. And yes, um, as Jessica brought in the chat, um, you will find the replays. Um, so I will upload the Earth one soon, and then this one also hopefully soon too on YouTube. So you can um, rewatch them when the season comes. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. And I wish everybody um, a nice evening, a nice autumn season and to tidy your home, sort out things, the things you want to keep, the things you want to let go. And if you need, if you don't want to go out anymore, that's normal. It's time to start entering in and being in yourself, preparing for the winter. Do make sure to massage uh, to San Lee, stomach 36, uh, to help your digestive system and to keep your immune system high during the autumn season. And um, yeah, I will invite you also to watch the winter webinar um, mid November and end of October, we'll be watching uh, the Earth uh, webinar. You're welcome, um, Edward. Yes, it's important for me to. Um, to explain the TCM concepts, um, because I think if we understand the theory, then we would apply more um, the advice on our health. Okay, it's 7.30 here in my clock. So thank you everybody for being here tonight. Um, I hope this webinar was useful to you. And I wish you a happy, grateful autumn and take care. Bye.